My name's Olivia and I'm a bishop in the Church of England. There probably isn't anyone watching this whose life hasn't been affected by COVID. Some of us through actually losing a friend or family member, some of us because of the effect it's had on jobs and future plans, our education and training, some of us because our lives have simply become unbearably stressful, juggling homeworking, childcare, homeschooling, dealing with isolation and loneliness, living with fear, working on the front line. COVID has turned our world upside down. And although we have all been impacted by COVID, it hasn't affected us all equally. It's hugely increased the inequalities in our society and those who are already most disadvantaged are now more so. And very sadly, those from black and ethnic minority communities have been particularly hard hit by the virus. As Christians, we follow Jesus Christ and the things he taught us about how to live. Our churches may not all look the same. We may belong to many different branches of the worldwide body of Christ, but this is the thing on which we all agree. And one of Jesus's key messages, one that we share with many other faith groups, was that we should love one another, that we should be good neighbours to each other. We have to do everything in our power in these difficult times to look out for and look after each other. And that means doing everything to stop COVID from spreading. We of course know that washing our hands, wearing a mask, keeping distance are all really important. But one of the best and fastest routes out of this terrible pandemic is to get vaccinated. By doing this, we'll loosen the grip which the virus has on us and speed up the time when we can be together again with our families and friends and co-workers in person. Taking the vaccine won't just protect us, it will protect them too, because it will slow the spread of the virus right down. Getting vaccinated is a sign of our love for one another, and each needle in an arm is a sign of hope. Now I know that there are some fears and anxieties about the vaccine, and that some people are concerned or confused about whether to take it. It's new and it's natural to have questions, but there is also a lot of misinformation out there and it's doing tremendous damage. These vaccines have been approved by our stringent regulation system. They've been robustly tested by some of the world's best scientists and healthcare experts. So if you've got hesitations, don't just ignore them. Contact your GP or pharmacist. They'll be able to talk this through with you. Vaccines are an amazing medical discovery. They've been protecting us for generations. They've helped us almost to eradicate diseases like polio, which used to cripple millions around the world. And as people of faith, we need to be full of joy that we have this protection on offer against coronavirus, which will save lives and give hope to our communities. I was hugely grateful to be offered a vaccination at very short notice recently from the end of the day stock at our local centre, and I just dropped everything and went off to get it. Please, please, if you are also offered one, just get there and take it. It will protect us and it'll be a sign of love and hope to our neighbours and our communities. If we all do this, we can beat this virus. We can and we will, for love's sake. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Welcome to Church at Home. My name's the Reverend Andrew Lightbound, and I'm presiding from St. Lawrence Church, Winslow. And we're delighted that Bishop Olivia will be preaching for us today, and maybe giving a few more insights into Come and See, and offering an invitation to join in.
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God. Though we have rebelled against him, let us then renounce our willfulness and ask for his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted 40 days in the wilderness, and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. Then God said to Noah, 
and his two sons with him. As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the, do- the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is See in the clouds, I remember my covenant that is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never, ever, never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have been established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The psalm today is Psalm 25, reading from verses 1 to 9. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, O my God. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are are God my saviour and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love for they are of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. 
Glory to you, O Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heaven torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today is the first Sunday of the season of Lent, leading up to Easter. And Lent is a great time to think about stuff. Who am I? Who is God? What's the connection? Where does Jesus come in? How can I understand or believe what he taught? What happens when I die? How can I get my life straight or under control? And what would happen if I gave up control and handed it over to God? Lent has always been a season when people have wrestled with these and other deep questions and prepared to be baptised, and Easter has always been the great occasion for baptism to happen. During this last year, a lot of people have found themselves puzzling over big and deep questions, and this Lent, many are joining us to come and see, to come and meet Jesus and chew all this over. The Bible is a very big story told in 66 different books, written at different times by different people. And we believe that it's God's story. And the text, even though it's written and edited by people, is God-breathed. Today's readings tell us about different parts of that big story, the big story into which we're all invited, those of us who've heard it before and lived within its embrace, and those who are here because they have heard the invitation to come and see to find out more, to wonder, ponder, think, feel, imagine, and maybe to let go into God's love. We listened to the last part of the story about the flood, water everywhere, violent, destructive, overwhelming. We've seen the like of it on the news in these days of climate change, but this is the big one. Noah and his family and all the animals in the ark have survived and eventually found dry land again. And as the sun comes out into the sky, which is still heavy with rain clouds, God sets his rainbow above them. He tells them it's a sign, a sign of a relationship which is reset from this point and will last until the end of our existence. It's a relationship, a covenant between the creator of all that is and was and shall be and the creation, animals, birds, insects, humans, everything that lives. It's the creator's promise that never again will our waywardness be punished by death, that the creator will never forget the creation. It is precious and loved. And there is a special bond between creator and creatures. It's a story which is beloved of small children's board books. And the rainbow has been seen a lot this year in windows as we thank the NHS. But it has this profound meaning for all of us, this reminder of relationship. We've also listened to a psalm this morning. The psalms are ancient songs, poems, which were written centuries before the birth of Christ. This one was probably written when the Jewish people were living in exile in Babylon in the 500s BC. And the words are beautiful. It speaks of looking to God in this desperate time of captivity in a foreign land, of trust and longing, of God's goodness and of a sense that God will always be there for those who keep within this relationship. 
And then five centuries later, we find Jesus in a crowd by the River Jordan where his cousin John is baptising people. Who on earth is this man? We're told he came from Nazareth, a small town in the provincial backwater of Galilee, where nothing exciting ever happens. His cousin John is called the Baptist because he gathers people by the Jordan, tells them to repent of their sins and offers them cleansing by dunking them in the river. But something strange happens on this day. Jesus comes forward and John is pretty surprised because he recognises in that moment that Jesus is not just his cousin, but someone far greater, someone who certainly doesn't need to be cleansed from sin. You can read more about this at the beginning of St John's Gospel. But Jesus wants to be identified with us, ordinary sinful people. So into the water he goes, and as he comes out, something huge happens. Who knows quite what it was, but St Mark says, the heavens were torn apart and the spirit descended on him like a dove. And since Mark reported it, the words must have been heard aloud. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. It was the moment of clarity about who Jesus was and is, and about his relationship to the creator. John's baptism is no longer needed. Jesus is about to begin his work and call us into a new relationship with the Father. But first, Jesus has inner work to do. He goes off, driven by the Spirit, into the wilderness and spends 40 days there fasting, wrestling with his demons, self-doubt, ego, the use and abuse of power, his identity, his core understanding of God. St Luke's Gospel describes all this. This period in the wilderness is what our season of Lent is derived from, a time to ask ourselves big questions about what matters in life and where we're heading, about our priorities and what we need to give up in order to be healthy and whole in body, mind and spirit, and about whether we dare to let go of self-reliance and trust instead in God. This Lent, perhaps, these questions are particularly strong in us after all that's happened to us and to our world in the past year. Jesus comes through and returns to Galilee, strengthened by his time apart and empowered by the Holy Spirit. He teaches and preaches, heals and calls out the wrong he sees around him and draws people into an incredible new relationship with God. And later he is arrested, tortured, dies on a cross, forgiving his enemies, and his resurrection blasts apart the finality of death. It cannot hold him. So we start our journey through Lent in 2021, more than 2,000 years later, travelling in company with 2.3 billion fellow humans on this planet who also believe in the new life that Jesus Christ promises us. And as we go, we welcome as companions everyone who is unsure, wavering, curious, desperate, longing, cynical, wondering, or just plain puzzled. It's a th time to think deeply about stuff that matters. And we pray that the same Holy Spirit who drove Jesus into the wilderness, who strengthened him in his dark times and who brought him through, will be with each one of us in this season as we look inward, upward and outward. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we still our hearts and minds and bodies in prayer, the response for our intercessions this morning to Lord, meet us in the silence, is give us strength and hear our prayer. We pray to the Lord for courage to be less self-reliant and to give ourselves to him this Lent. Give your church the courage to give up her preoccupation with herself and to give more time to your mission in the world. We pray for discernment that we may hear the questions from those seeking you and turn to respond with joy and generosity. May the blood and water flowing from the side of Jesus bring forgiveness to your people and help us to face the cost of proclaiming salvation. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give your world the courage to give up war, bitterness and hatred and to seek peace. We pray for reconciliation across the world, for healing, that all your people may know your purpose for them and return to you. May the shoulders of the risen Jesus, once scourged by soldiers, bear the burden of political and military conflict in our world. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to give up quarrels, strife and jealousy in our families, neighbourhoods and communities. We pray that we may look back over the past year and see the strength in small actions in our communities. Look forward to seeing those small shoots take root and flourish. May the presence of the risen Jesus, his body once broken and now made whole, Bring peace and direction as we live with one another. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to give up our selfishness as we live for others. And to give time, care and comfort to the sick. We give thanks for all those who care for others in body, mind and spirit, at home, in hospitals, care homes and with a phone call or text, with a letter or prayer. May the wounded hands of Jesus bring his healing touch and the light of his presence fill their rooms. Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to give up our fear of death and to rejoice with those who have died in faith. May the feet of the risen Lord Jesus, once nailed to the cross, walk alongside the dying and bereaved in their agony and walk with us and all your church through death to the gate of glory. 
Lord, meet us in the silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise. Almighty God, everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For in these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through the study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. 
as we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds. We bless you for your mercy and join with the saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, we look for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Frideswide, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever and ever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes in glory. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord in the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ broken for us. the blood of Christ shed for us.
let us pray. Lord God, you have renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it, you nourish our faith, increase our hope and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread and enable us to live by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give you a contrite heart. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.